Praise the Lord, what a great day it is. Let's go ahead and start off in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, that every word is spirit-led, filled with love, peace, hope, compassion, liberty, and humility. Let us come to receive from you with eyes and ears and spirits open and give us understanding and wisdom as we listen to this message today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, this is part two of the reasons why you're broke. Now, to give you a bit of a recap, and I'm going to get into, I probably won't go through all of this today because it would probably be an hour long. And so I'm just going to break this down. We'll have three parts of this message, which will be okay. But the first part of the message or part one of the reasons why you're broke, just to give you a recap, the first one, the reason why you're broke is that you believe the lies. Like that, that wealthy people are greedy or that wealth is, is terrible. Money is evil. No, it's, that's, there's lies or that it's not for you or that you couldn't handle it. Whatever the lies are, that's the first reason why you're broke. The second is that you followed the worldly fantasies, lottery, get rich schemes, so on and so forth. All the worldly things about, about wealth or money. The third thing, and this is just a recap, okay? The third thing is that you, you, you have no understanding of kingdom principles, whether it's financial or, or prosperity, but the kingdom principles are, have, have, to date have evaded you. Um, number four, the fourth reason why you're broke is a spirit of poverty. Number five is that you give not. You're just, you're just a miser. Got to rebuke that. Number six is slander and gossip and your speech overall. And number seven is that you have not had any plan with your finances. And so you are operating um, impulsively, which will lead to all the reasons why you are broke. So that's the first seven. So today we'll get into the next seven of today's message and see if any of those apply. The, excuse me, purpose of this is to get you free from that which impoverish, impoverishes you, as well as open your eyes to some things that maybe you've yet to see biblically. And, and so today, and remember that these are, these are in no particular order, okay? But the next, re the next reason why you're broke is debt. Now, on average, the American the average American has $16,000 worth of credit card debt. Debt. Never mind a home, never mind a vehicle, never mind student loans or anything else. That is credit card debt, which would lead me back to the previous point as to impulsiveness and having, having no financial plan as, as, as we should and no operation in godly kingdom principles. And so the debt, let me take you to Proverbs 22, verse 7. So Proverbs 22 tells us, and this is very important that we understand this. I believe that sometimes, you know, we, we read the Bible and we, we kind of think that the God's word is like, oh, these are just some suggestions instead of a creed to live by. But as you apply God's word to mean it literally, yes, there's literally as well as allegorically, but when we look at God's word literally, there's so many truths. And sometimes we over-spiritualize something and not just take it for what it exactly means. And so in Proverbs 22, verse 7, it tells us this, and it's so very clear. Clear as, clear as blue skies without chemtrails. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. We've all heard this before, but yet if we know this, what is causing us from knowing it to applying and living in it? See, that's there's this gap. Well, I know that. I know that. I know I shouldn't text and drive. Well, what's it going to take for us to actually get that? I know I shouldn't eat deep fried Twinkies with a Diet Coke for breakfast and lunch, and but I know that, but we know debt is not good. We've got to be delivered from debt. Jesus paid the price, so we'd be free from our debt. So why are we going to get in bondage in debt? Debt is bondage. 
We have such an unawareness because we're so used to living in it that it becomes the norm. I just got to have it. It's normal for me to go and get a car every two years because, you know, I just got to drive the latest and the greatest. And it's normal to sleep overnight and buy a cell phone at $1,000. It's normal. We've normalized debt. But just because we've normalized it doesn't mean it's godly. Okay. Number eight, the eighth point, and this is probably, this is one point that, that many would not really recognize as a reason why you're broke, but I'm going to explain this and I am going to choose words carefully because, and you'll understand why as I go along. The eighth reason why you are broke, or ninth reason rather, is college. You went to college. And that sounds really funny. And, and so if you are any of my students watching, I'm not telling you to drop out. Okay. Recognize this, but I will say this. Okay. When, when I've been a college professor for 20 years and I would never put my children in college unless they wanted to do something productive, like become a medical doctor. We don't need any more lawyers. The, the, the United States has 4% of the world population and 96% of lawyers. You can study God's law and understand God's law, and you don't need to be in the Bar Association and all that leftist nonsense. So, so there, there's that. But not only this, in, in terms of why people, why, why you broke, the student loans, they make it so easy. College campuses are cesspools of debt. And, and I remember when I was in college, there was always all the credit card companies and they pay big money. You know, I remember back in the day when, when it was Capital One that paid almost $20 million to be on college campuses in Oklahoma. And there was a woman whose daughter committed suicide from all of the debt that she incurred while in college, credit card debt. And this woman, I watched the whole documentary and this woman, this mother's crusade was to get credit cards off college campuses. Some of the colleges that I've taught for, I've actually pushed for the credit cards to not be there, as well as the vending machines as well, because though there's nothing good that comes out of a vending machine, and and in most cases, and so the the debt, the student loan debt, the credit card debt, the way that they that they prey on young people is an abomination. But you know what? Who cares? It's just debt. You're going to get your degree, and then you'll get a good job. What too is also a fallacy. Let me break this down, what I mean by this. Most college kids that go to college, they end up with some kind of student loan unless the parents pay for it, which is not the most majority of college students. When they go to the proprietary colleges, the proprietary colleges cost more, and, and we can kind of recognize that. And I'll give you a strategy of how to go to college and not spend your whole entire life savings and come out with nothing. But, but many go to college with this idea that I'm going to get this wonderful job which may sound great, except for here's what happens, and studies still show this. Most college students graduate with student loans, okay? That's the first thing. They missed out on four years of work experience, so they're four years behind those that didn't go to college, but they got the college experience, yes. 87% rapes in America are on college campuses, so what's the experience they're getting? They're being indoctrinated into sin, they're being indoctrinated into filth, they're being indoctrinated into sexual perversion, they're being indoctrinated everything anti-Christ. Let me give you some examples. Queerizing the Bible is one of the classes taught in some colleges. They teach Ramadan. They teach homosexuality. Many colleges have, have sex week where they teach all the perversion of sodomy, how to, how to have anal intercourse the best way, the way to make it feel good. All these things are taught on college campuses at your tax dollars expense. And your kids are learning this stuff. And most people don't want to worry this because they're not there. Okay. Uh, who's the guy? Um, uh, Hugh Hefner. He was, he was a, a, a virgin when he entered into college. He did not become what he was until after he took the sex ed psychology course and all they did was indoctrinate him into the things of Kinsey, who was a sadomasochistic who used to, who used to prey on infants and used live infant babies for his sexual studies. This is what kids learn. They learn about Skinner and Freud, these, these, these people that are of such a level of perversion and they need deliverance. But you know what? That's who, that's who they teach about in colleges. So your kid may go into college thinking one way and come out and you're like, what the heck are you? Where did you go? That's exactly why. It is indoctrination into communism and socialism. 90% of it. And I will speak to this and, and I will give you many, many more reasons on the day that I'm eligible to tell you why you should never put your kid in college unless they're going to do something productive. Over 50% of college kids right now in America that, are, that take online classes are on, are on some form of mental medication. They need deliverance. 
But you know what they end up with? They, get, they, they end up with more problems and no job and student loan debt. And that student loan debt takes longer to pay off. And studies still continue to reveal that when someone goes to college, they not only lose that four years, as I said, but the person who worked the four years, they actually come out ahead with a better quality of life, no debt, and their salary in the end ends up being higher than those that went to college. So if, you, if your kid wants to go to college or you're thinking about going to college and you wanted to get a degree in liberal arts, well, just don't. Just go hang out at a riot. You'll get enough of, of learning to know that that's a waste of time. Now, if you are set on going to college, I will speak to this. Go to a junior college first, take all of your general ed courses, and then transfer into a college of your choice. Why would you do that? Because the same college professors are at the junior colleges are the same ones at your other colleges that are the adjunct. So you get the same for a quarter of the cost. And so we have to know, we have to recognize that the reasons why we're in debt is because everything about the system is set up against us to get us in a level of, of bondage through debt and servanthood to the enemy. And we've got to wake up and recognize this. Most, when I lived in, when I lived in Denver, most of my clients that I worked in, they, I coach public speaking. Most of my clients um, that were millionaires never went to college because they couldn't see the value of it. <laughs> Too bad I didn't get that revelation. And so my, for me, college was a means to an end because I wanted, my goal was to be a tenured professor. And then I got there, I was like, wow, this is really what it is. I thought I was gonna raise people up to think. Now I got the word of God that raises people up to think so we can all be productive in God's kingdom and not pushing and propagating a worldly, earthly system that does nothing but deprive us and make us depraved. And so that is probably one reason why you are in, in or why you're broke is because college indoctrinated you into all this liberal liberalology that is anti-Christ. Jesus was not a socialist, and you can study the life of Jesus and see exactly how he wasn't, but when we look at those that are broke, many people that went to college, they end up with some dumb degree, have no ability to pay it off. And I'll give you one more final point on this, and then, you know, I'm going to move on, but I will tell you this, just to prove a point. A student of mine came to me many years ago, and she was asking about about master's degrees and she wanted to get one in social work. I said, now before you get a degree in social work, let me ask you this, where do you want to work? Because certain, certain um, companies or agencies will require a degree in counseling. Some want you to grab a degree in therapy, others require a degree in social work. If you don't have the right degree, you're ineligible for that job. So you gotta know where you wanna work. But not only that, the degree was 80, 88,000, give or take for the master's degree, but the salary of the job capped out at 22. Well, why on earth would you do that? Because your student loan debt is going to be about the amount that you would make per month. So your quality of life is nothing, and then you're just going to deal with problems that, that would just be exasperating, and, and your whole life would just be, you would never get out. And so we don't really think about that. A lot of kids go into college, and they just think about, oh, I'm going to be so rich, and, and I'm going to be this famous fashion designer. Average fashion designer makes 40 grand a year, let's be clear. So that's not, that's, that's like nothing. So the debt is what we have to be thinking about. Why am I broke? What did college really do for me? And how can I save future generations from not falling into the indoctrination of what it breeds? Because it breeds debt if you don't pay for it yourself. Now, if your company's paying for it, well then get that degree, but make certain one, you go in with eyes wide open. And number two, that you know how many years they would want you to work for them before you could leave because many companies start doing that and some states make that illegal. So college is another reason why, why you may be broke. Not telling you to get out if you happen to be in, but I will tell you to operate in prudence and that God can give you business ideas and ways of going about life and learning things without, I mean, it's just easier to learn it by doing it than to learn it sitting there watching other people that have, that have no life experience teach it. I mean, get out there. All right, now, the next, my next point, and I know I took a little bit longer on that, but that's something that needs to be addressed because many people are living the lie that in order to get ahead, you need a college degree. No, you don't. They want you to believe that. Start your own business. Be employed. There are many ways and means in which, which people can do things without the debt that consumes them after. Now, 
Point number 10 is ungodly priorities. Why are you broke? Ungodly priorities. We're told in Matthew 6, 33, to seek first his kingdom, not your bank account, not your own ideas of this, that, or the other. So when we have ungodly priorities, we're not giving, we're not operating in the move of the spirit. We don't know. We don't know where our money's going. We're eating it per month. We have no clue well, then this is why we're broke. It becomes an unawareness. So when you have godly priorities and your house is in order, you will know where your money's going. You will know what is where, how much you're giving, how much you're saving, and how much you're spending. We might say 30, 30, 30 with some extra for whatever needs. Now, let me take you to Proverbs 20. We're going to go a little bit to the left. Um, no, Proverbs 22. 13, I think this is the one. Okay, so... Mm. Proverbs twenty two thirteen. The sluggard says, "There's a lion outside. I'll be killed in the public square." So because of that, I'm not going to do anything. My priorities are are so out of order. When we start becoming about the things of God, and look and recognize that one way the enemy wants to ensnare us is through finances, we'll think and operate different. There are four ways in which the enemy will attack, but there are strategic ways in which through he does attack. Finances, your health, your transportation, and your relationships. Now, if you live in a city where, where you don't need a car, that's great, so you don't, have, you don't have that expense of a vehicle, but you do have expensive subway and taxis and everything else. So you still have to have a means to get, get around, and if it ever goes down, then what do you do? How do you get around? So the enemy is strategic in that way. But in finances, he uses finances in a way to keep people unaware. The one-stop click on, on many of those shopping sites makes it very easy that we're not aware. And, and that leads me into, my, into some of my next points. But ungodly priorities. What is your financial house look like? We know that, that in my house there are, many, or there are many rooms in my mansion. I think it's some, what the, you know the scripture, that there are many, many rooms. But when we look at, when we look at each one of us, if we're a temple, and our bodies are a temple, and we begin to look at how we're taking care of, of our lives. Money is one of the biggest issues that people get, they get funny about. And I used to as well. I used to get, whenever there was a, an offering time for tithes and offerings at church, I'd leave. Oh, I, I'd leave. I was the first one out of there before it was time to see that plate coming. Mm -mm. Oh, no. Mm -mm. I was the one that would want to, like, if I put my 10, is, can I get change back? How, how's I was mm. like, what am I, how many, let's see, how, how can I put the change in there and not let it ring, you know, make noise? Ungodly principles will lead us in ungodly living, and we have to correct those principles to get in order with the Word of God. The, the really the foundation, and this probably should have been number one, but as I said, these are in no particular order, and, and I, would, I would venture to say that this is the number one reason why you're broke. You lack wisdom. And what exactly does that mean? Well, it means exactly that. When, when we have something in our lives that's out of order, we're lacking in wisdom. You have relationship problems, well, lack of wisdom. You have, have financial problems, lack of wisdom. Have employment problems, lack of wisdom. Everything comes back to a lack of wisdom and understanding and how to apply wisdom to, to resolve the issue. Because we've not really been taught about money and the importance of it as a whole, even though we know Jesus talks about it, many people with a poverty spirit don't want to hear it. They just, oh, well, you're just, you don't know, you don't know because you have money and you just don't, oh, sit down. You'll have money too when you walk in wisdom, see, because wisdom will operate, will change how you operate. Now, um, Proverbs 8. We got to rebuke these lies because the lies are killing us. Now, this is, what, this is what comes with wisdom, Proverbs 8.18. 8, with me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. If you are lacking in wisdom, you are lacking in riches, honor, enduring wealth, and prosperity. Broke people typically don't have a lot of, a lot of wisdom. Why? Because they're broke. And their lack of wisdom demonstrates it. So it kind of goes hand in hand. What do I mean by this? Well... When you look at how you're operating, mo most people that are broke lack wisdom. That's why they're broke. Many people have called out the president for being stupid. 
I find that the funniest statement of all. Whether you like them or not, I don't really care. I'm not into politics. I'm, I'm for the left and the right because the bird needs both wings to fly. But if he's that stupid, he's got to be the stupidest billionaire to ever live because... It takes wisdom to get to be a millionaire, but then there's that gap between the millionaire and billionaire. And then you gotta stay there. So obviously if he got there, it took some level of wisdom and discipline. And then to stay there, it takes another set of wisdom skills or another level of wisdom. See, it's one thing to lose the weight. Many people take the steps to lose the weight. Now you got to maintain, maintain the weight that you've got to. Many people have a desire to get married, but how are you going to stay married? They don't think about that. What's your marriage plan? They think about, oh, I'm going to get married. I'm going to spend $50,000 on my wedding. And it's going to be, oh, that's just for the dress. La, la, la. But we have no plan. So, so wisdom, with wisdom, when you get wisdom, you get honor. You get enduring wealth. You get prosperity and you get riches. Riches are different than wealth. So when we look at this, if you don't have any of these things, well, you're lacking in wisdom. Like all these rioters, like they're out there. You see these people, right? They're, they're lacking in so much wisdom. There's no honor in that, but they don't care because they're lacking in wisdom. Like they need prayer and, de and deliverance. So if you are not, if you are needing to work to sustain yourself, you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're in Hollywood or not. Anyone who has to work to sustain, sustain themselves is considered poor. By, by the very definition of poor. So we begin to say, well, Lord, how do, I, how do I move from this mess that I'm in of barely surviving to walk in the abundance? Ask for wisdom daily. Wake up and seek her daily. She is your sister, by the way. Uh, Proverbs 7, 4 tells us this. So, so when we start to examine, well, why am I broke? Because I'm not getting wisdom. You pray for wisdom and God's going to show you where your two cents are. And then you can multiply your two cents and walk in more wisdom. And then you'll begin to grow in a new way. Now. Five. Uh, number 12. The next point, and this is a really, this one is a big one that, that has blinded the eyes of, of most. And it's a spirit of blindness. Spirit of blindness is in Isaiah eleven twenty nine, 29, I believe is what the scripture is. And the spirit of blindness keeps people blind. It keeps us unaware. We're unaware of the things of our financial, financial situations. And let me explain, and this is a full trap. You got to be aware of this. Studies continue to show that as people use cash, to pay for their items, they spend less. No, people don't want to break. And another thing, carry hundreds if you can, or fifties or twenties. You'll find that you spend less because you won't want to spend them on ridiculous tiny things. And you think twice. They spend almost 20% less than people that just whip out the card. And another thing, they ask you, do you chip? Do you have a chip? No, I don't have a chip. The card does, but I surely don't. I am not chipped and I'm not receiving that. So I always say, no, the chip has a card, but I do not. Sometimes it give me a funny look. I don't care. I'm going to train them. So with this, when we are blind, we're unaware. I'll give you some examples and ways of how people are unaware. It's normal for many people to lease a cell phone. Like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Just buy one. Oh, but you know, I got to have the latest and greatest. Who says? Why do you think you have to have the latest and greatest? This is one you have not worked? Oh, it does. But you know what? I, it's so new and it's got new features and the screen changes colors. That's worth the extra $999, right? Yes. And I'm being a little facetious, but Western society is so spoiled and so ungrateful in so many ways that we don't even recognize where our money's going. 30% almost, well, not 30% not of the population, but as a whole, the population spends 30% of their income every month on technology, cell phone, service, TV, so on and so forth. How much are you spending? It's a lot of money. What could you be doing with that? Moving into a house or buying something else of value instead of spending it. I will, I will tell you this. You want to know the difference The difference between, between the rich and poor size? Many people might say, well, of course it is. It always comes down to size, size bank account. No. The, the rich people are aware. The, the wealthy people, one thing that separates the, the wealthy from the poor, the size, the size of the TV and the size of the library. The wealthy people have bigger libraries and smaller TVs. The, the poor people have bigger TVs and smaller libraries. 
Where is your mind going? What are you focusing on? Are you even aware? On average, I just read last week that kids are spending seven hours a day looking at cell phones. You know what that's going to do? Their eyes. Why are they not reading books? Well, because you know we're going to put them on Kindle. Well, right. Give me a break. There are studies also show that more people are buying hardback books than downloading books on Kindle. Now, I'm not going to come against either one because I have six books published. So my point isn't, isn't that. My point is that we are unaware. And they make things on purpose for us to be unaware. This is why before I go into any store, I pray so I'm not, I'm not stuck and trapped and used by that system that is wanting to take my money, that is wanting to, to bring forth something that takes away from me. No, 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 I walk in the full power and authority, and so should you. That when you walk in it, you on the offense. You might say, that's a lot of effort. Yes, it is, but you know what? I know where my money's going. I know where my mind is. I know where my time is going. I don't ever kill time. I don't have time to kill. I have time to, to invest because life is short. I don't have time to sit and watch stupid TV because life is short. I'm reading books. I'm moving my mind so that I'm constantly aware. His word tells us the enemy is always roaming to and fro of whom he can devour. He is devouring many. The average income of, of, of conservative Protestants or Protestants is 26200 Are we for real? Like, why are we settling to be broke? Like, that is, that's the average. Are we for, that is, that like, really? What can you do with that? How are you going to spread the gospel living on that? That's $1,800 a month, two, two grand, maybe like 2200 You take out taxes, you get like sixteen fifty a month. Are you for real? You got to rebuke that off in the name of Jesus and make that like at my average income is like 26200 a month. Come on now. Let's be moving here. We're going to rebuke that. But we become unaware. It's just an app. It's a free app and they get you addicted and 72% of sales of all apps come after you get the free one. So you download it, they get you addicted, playing Angry Birds. I don't know why they're not happy, but you know, bring in all these things and then you get addicted to it and it's only 99 cents. And next thing you know, each 99 cents turns up to like 50. You, you could have bought some organic apples for less than that and, and food that would feed your family. That would be better food than what we eat at the stores, but we're not aware. We've got to wake up. Stop drinking the fluoride-filled water, the, 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 the injected infested foods that have nothing in them but phosphates that are killing us and wake up and get in his word and start living and taking authority for Christ. Because if you are blind, you're not taking authority for anything, except for those two blind men that I still love. I just love that. Two blind men chasing Jesus. Like there's a joke in there. Like, so one day there's two blind men. Like how'd they do that? So... We're unaware of finances. We're unaware of God's principles. We're unaware that we're lacking in wisdom. We're unaware of the debt college brings. We're unaware of debt. We're unaware of the worldly things right before us. We have got to wake up, become aware, and rebuke that which is not of God. So that was my fifth point for today, which I'm going to move on to number 13, which is unforgiveness. And I'm not going to go through all of these, all of these today, because some of you might be saying, okay, are we ready? We're, I'm having a nap. I'll wait till next week. Unforgiveness. Matthew 6, 14 is very clear. And let me tell you something. Nothing in my life changed until I forgave. I had no idea the issues that I had with unforgiveness and I tried to justify. And I was one of those, oh, I forgave my mom. Oh, give me a break. I didn't even know what forgiveness was. So how could I even recognize and say that I said it? I didn't even know what it was. How can you say, oh, I forgave if you don't even know what the word means? Think about that for a moment. 14 of 6, Matthew. For if you, 176 times in the Bible, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you. So if you've been praying and I get, and I get a lot of these emails, pray for me, financial miracle, I need a miracle, I need money, I need money, I need a breakthrough. Well, let's talk about your level of unforgiveness. And you know that it comes back to that because many people that are praying for, for financial breakthrough have unforgiveness. They don't give. They're misers. They're bitter and they're resentful. Those are just some of the symptoms. There's 40, almost about 40 symptoms of unforgiveness that people don't talk about because they don't know about them. Unforgiveness is a blessing blocker. So you want financial breakthrough, you got to forgive. If you're broke, talk to God about what's keeping me broke. Who do I need to forgive? When we start forgiving, then we will get breakthrough. Everything in my life changed when I forgave, 
when I forgave and you might say, yeah, but you don't know what they did to me. Let me say something, it doesn't matter. I know it's hard, but it doesn't matter what they did, did to you. It's a matter what you do before God. Unforgiveness is not about them. It's about you rebuking that poison you've been drinking. It's time to spit it up, get it out. Go before God, because if you have uh, if you have somebody to forgive, you need to repent, because that tells us, or it's very clear, that you have unforgiveness, and unforgiveness is a sin against God, which separates. So unforgiveness is, is another reason why you just might be broke. Time to deal with it. You want you want to live in the financial fullness of God? Well, you're going to have to start forgiving. And I will, I will tell you from personal experience that my everything in my life changed. The overflow, the anointing started to flow in this ministry. There was an outreach that came that never could before. That the people's lives are changing. And, I, and, and it's just, it's a way of God of what happens when we move in this way. So we got to start recognize this and get into the things of God and deal with our unforgiveness. Now the last one that I'm going to share with you today before we close out is this. I'm going to take you to, to, where do I want to take you to? Jeremiah 11.3. And you can write this one down. Sins and iniquity and transgressions. We know that David dealt with the sins and iniquity. I think it's Psalm 32. When, when David dealt with the sin and iniquity and the transgressions, his life began to change. It's Jeremiah 11. So we know in Deuteronomy 8.18 that God gave us the power to accumulate wealth as a demonstration of his covenant. So wealth is not a bad thing. It is an establishment of, of the relationship with the Lord. Not to say that, oh, well, you must have a really good relationship because you're so rich. We're not looking at it that way, but we're demonstrating the fullness of God. Okay, and wisdom, wisdom comes with full treasuries. So there's a fullness that comes as we get rid of our brokenness and start walking in the things of God. But in, but in Jeremiah 11, 3, it reads this, Tell them that this is what the Lord, God of Israel, says. Cursed is the one who does not obey the terms of this covenant. The terms that I commanded your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt. Many people have left Egypt, but Egypt hasn't left them. The, the sins, iniquities, and the transgressions of your bloodline may still be operating. Many people will say, well, yeah, but I gave my life to Jesus and that all finished on the cross. Well, then, if this would be the case, my question to you is, why, why do you look and, and behave exactly like your parents? Why, why if, there's, if there's a curse of, of something in your bloodline and it's still occurring, then it's evident that it's still occurring. For example, um, well, my dad, my dad's dad had bankruptcy. My dad had bankruptcy. Now I'm filing bankruptcy. Generational curse. Sins and iniquities have not been broken. The soul ties, the generational things, the ancestral issues have not yet been dealt with. And so they're still going to flow because they have legal right to until you stop them. I was unaware of all of these things until the Lord started taking me on a journey to uncover all of these things because I didn't want, I wanted the full flow of the Lord to come from him to me and not go through, not have to go through anything of, of my bloodline that would taint it. And so as, as I started seeking in with the Lord and started learning about this stuff, I was like, well, Lord, my, no, my, I came from a whole lineage of, of, uh, of high ranking people that, that, that I'm like, I got to rebuke everything that comes from this 30, 33 degree of this and the other secret stuff and all the other stuff that I had to uncover and that the Holy Spirit showed me and deal with the sins, iniquity, and transgressions. So we want to move away from that. Many of us stay, many people stay broke because, because they don't understand the spiritual things of God. You got you to gotta break the stuff off, leave it, and let God move and restore you. So for today, when, when, we, when you begin to operate saying, well, yeah, what are, what are my parents? What does their financial background look like? What, what, am, I, what am I repeating of my, of my family bloodline? And you can still see it. For example, when, when I look at, at city, different cities and even different people, that, that when you see one, one family of doctors, they beget doctors, they beget doctors. The same thing when you, see, when you see kids born in prison. They have kids born in prison. They have kids born in prison. They might come a Christian, but guess what? They still have these things coming into their bloodline. So as we remove the sins, iniquity, and transgressions of our bloodlines, we begin to move in a different way. Or if now it's just us and God moving through us for, for the benefit of his kingdom, then we can climb broke no more. Because we don't have time to be broke. And let me tell you, it's just as easy to be rich as it is to be broke. Why be broke? 
Ecclesiastes 10.19 tells us that money answers all things. People that are broke don't have any answers. So they really just shouldn't talk. They should just go get wisdom so they can come forth and bring forth something. But we, won't, we don't have time to be, to be wallowing and living in our brokenness and glorifying it. It is, it is not an excuse. It's been a way of life, and we've got to break that off because we've got to start moving in God's kingdom to do God's work His way. So we're going to close out for today, but before we do, because I still have a whole, I still have seven more, but I'll wait for these next week because I know I gave you a lot of information today, all biblical, to help you grow and move in the things of the Lord. But I want to give you a recap, okay, so you can write this down. So number one reason why you're broke is you believe the lies. Number two, you follow worldly ideas. Number three, you don't know godly principles of prosperity. Number four, spirit of poverty. Number five, you give not. Number six, slander, gossip, and your speech. Number seven, and I'm going through these a little fast because I've already spoken these. That's all right, you get it. Imprudent to planning or impulsive. I just got to have it. I just got to have it. I got to have it all. Debt, number eight. Number nine, college. Number 10, ungodly priorities. Number 11, lacking in wisdom. Number 12, spirit of blindness. Number 13, unforgiveness. And number 14, sin and iniquity and transgressions. So take those things to God over this next, over this next week. Just like I tell my students, here's your homework. Take this stuff. Go, go do your homework and bring it back and we'll go back through it. But in, in all seriousness, these are some of the reasons. And I know that there's probably going to be more, but we're going to get through these. I know that this is a rather lengthy message, but it's one that I believe is very timely and one that will help us to get free. Just because the economic collapse is, is upon us and just because people are broke has no, has no bearing on us. You know why? Because there are just as many wealthy people and, and they're taking over the world. And guess what? We do have that authority to do so in the name of Jesus. So who cares what the economy says? I don't care what the economists tell me. I don't care. They, they say, buy this stock. I'm like, what are you buying? And they say, I'm buying gold. Well, then why are you telling me to buy that? I don't want in on what you're doing. Let's be clear here we got to walk in wisdom to recognize the truth because the truth sets us free so this stuff as you take each one of these to God and really get in and dig in you're going to get some breakthrough and that's and that's going to help you move and transform your life in the name of Jesus so that's my message for today let's pray father I thank you I thank you father for making the way for us to set down being broke to not wear it as a badge of honor any longer that we're moving into full prosperity I pray, Father, for my brothers and sisters who hear this, that they recognize that being broke is, is, is not something that they want and that wealth is not an embarrassment, that it's okay to, to have wealth, that it is okay to have money, that it is okay, Father, to, to move in, in the greater things of you. Father, we just rebuke all these notions that, that somebody needs to be poor for us to be rich. Father, we rebuke that. We call forth prosperity in our lives. We rebuke the canker worms and the locusts from stealing what is rightfully ours. We call forth, Father, that you move us to enter into the labor of others and that when we reap, we will sow into your kingdom for the advancement of it. We call, excuse me, call forth an increase in wisdom, an increase in understanding, an increase, Father, in godly principles operating and reigning in our lives. We call ourselves givers, Father, out of the abundance that you give us. So we thank you that we will multiply, magnify, and optimize what you've given to us in, the, in your name, Yeshua. Father, we thank you for this message today. Let it grow in us. Let it fester. Let, we, let us meditate on your word. Apply it and experience transformational growth in you. We give you the praise and the glory in these things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, saints, God bless you. We got through this message today. To God be the glory. And you know, we pray every single day at the 12 o'clock hour. Last night, on, well, we pray every Sunday night at 8 o'clock, and I will tell you this, that we prayed for a move of the Holy Spirit, a move within every single city that has these terrible riots, and we prayed, and, and let me tell you what happened today. There's 18 cities that report that the, that, that the people in all these cities from one coast to another, from the north to the south to the east to the west, have shown up in their cities to volunteer to clean it up. That is a move of God that we are experiencing. Yes, the, the fools are doing what they do, which is foolish. But we, we pray every day. We pray for the hearts and the minds of men and women to come to know Christ. We pray. We pray in the name of Jesus for our president. We pray for, for others that, that need an uplift, a word of encouragement. And so I encourage you to join us. It's every day at 12 o'clock. And you know what? I'm also going to say this. If you want to know Jesus, you know what? Let me just tell you, it's so simple. It was so simple. I came to Jesus not knowing anything. I was so ignorant, and I tell you, he changed my life. 
And you know what? All you got to do right where you are. And you know what? The Lord is putting this on my heart. I, I believe that this is going to be happening more times as we continue to go along. But right where you are, if you want to know Jesus, you know what? We don't need to make a special trip to a building. Because you know what? The enemy's sly and he might prevent that. But you know what? Right where you are, if this is you and you're watching and you're like, I can't get the video to stop. She won't shut up. How do I move it? You know what? God has you right there. And if you want to know Jesus, all you have to do is just ask him to be the center of your life. It goes something like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a mess. I don't know what I've done in my life, but I need you. I need you to enter into my life and help me. Will you be the center of my life? Jesus, I need a Savior. I can't do it alone. Please help me. In Jesus' name. It's really that simple. Amen. It's really that simple. You can say whatever words you want. I don't like giving the template scripted. You've got to say this. You've got to say that. I just prefer that, that you just have your own conversation. Tell him that you made a mess of your life. It's not like he doesn't know. We've all been there. We've all done it. And ask him to become the center of your life. And as you do that, you know what? He will. And if you need a Bible, I want you to go to julieblow.com and I will send you a Bible. And if you have a Bible to give, please go to julieblow.com and send us Bibles because we are always have a given exchange of Bibles. We receive them and we send them out. There are many hurting people that are in need of Bibles and we're going to do our best to make sure that you get one. It's no cost to you because this word of God is, is, is everything to me and, and I wouldn't be here without it. And so you're invited to join us for prayer every day. All you have to do is dial 214-586-0411. And I teach live every Thursday night at 8 o'clock, that same number, 214-586-0411. And it's to help those that really want to move in the things of God, that want to become and step up and be, be the spiritual special forces for God, to move in a way of getting into their assignments and moving and taking back what is rightfully ours and moving in their assignments to proclaim Jesus on the earth in these times. If that's you, you just join us Thursday night. You just need pen, paper, and your Bible. And that's it. We make it so easy. You don't even have to go anywhere. You just We already know you got your phone with you. All you got to do is just dial it, listen, join us. We are from all over the world. There's people from my brother in Antigua. There's people from, from Norway and England and all over. We got the Bronx covered. We got from Boston to Austin. We got them all. And so all you got to do is just dial and join us as we rejoice and, and, and pray daily. So for more about us and what we're doing, go to julieblow.com. There's plenty of resources and things to help you come to know the Lord in this time. God bless you, saints. We'll finish out this message in the in the coming days. And I have many more things to share with you. That, I mean, the God God is just like downloading so many things that, that it's just, it's incredible. And I'm so excited to just be able to share what he gives me that'll help you know Jesus. So God bless you. Please like, share, and, and spread this message so we can really bring more, more souls to Christ from one end of the earth to the other. And until next time, be safe, pray for the pray for the foolish, pray for the wise, and know Jesus and stay in his presence. Bye guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.